Well, I have not <coughs> referred to Mr. Clark uh, in that uh, particular case. Uh, I think that uh, you people are probably better qualified to judge whether Mr. Clark is speaking with or without the facts. Who would I include in it? Some of the people that have made charges on the floors of Congress in the past few weeks about wiretapping and surveillance. Uh, many of the uh, students and other militants, I shouldn't use other militants, students and militants, that frequently uh, get to uh, uh, conclusions too rapidly without finding what the facts are about the situation, getting their information from bad sources. And I can go on and on and on, but we need not get into characterization of all of our opponents or critics. Well, that's perfectly ridiculous, and I'm sure Senator Muskie knows it. Uh, as I, I've addressed myself to this subject matter before, and I think that uh, it can best be illustrated since I was talking in Cincinnati the last time about somebody in the FBI following a criminal into the Cincinnati Reds baseball game. Uh, the complaint would be about the same if Johnny Bench, the catcher, said he was under surveillance. And this is about the same as Senator Muskie's appearance at the Earth Day activities. Uh, there is no necessity for anybody in this country who is not engaged in criminal activities to worry about surveillance or their right to speak out and exercise fully their First Amendment rights. We have demonstrated that time and time again in Washington with these large demonstrations, which we've provided all the accommodations for them and let them go and talk and demonstrate. That's their right, and we're going to protect it. Okay. I've only got two ears and one mouth. Whose wires are tapped? People who are engaged in criminal activities, organized crime and narcotics, which we tap their wires under court, or court authorization pursuant to the 1968 legislation enacted by Congress. And there are a very limited number of foreign agents and subversives whose wire are tapped in the interest of protecting our national security. What is the policy of the... Do you think it would be necessary to, to have both points of view uh, for a, a full education as has been suggested by some of these on-campus speakers? Well, I would, I've been suggesting that for a long time because it seems to me that in too many cases they have one point of view and don't get the other. I am all in favor of uh, a complete and open dialogue in the process of education. I think it is most important. Have you read any? You mentioned the missing of facts by the public. Do you think in this respect the press should be more aggressive? In, in searching for the truth and presenting it to the public? Or? I most assuredly do. <laughs> I think it's absolutely necessary. Of the press? Oh, I wouldn't say that Vice President Agnew has ever criticized the press. I think he's from, <laughs> from time to time provided a critique of their operations. <laughs> certainly, certainly hasn't been criticizing them. <laughs> Gentlemen, we have time for two more questions. Your wife have political aspirations <laughs> in the state of Arkansas. <laughs> she doesn't even have political aspirations in the state of confusion, let alone Arkansas. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Mr. Attorney General.